So now we can move on to the third uh, speaker, which is Subham. So Subham is a third year PhD student about to graduate. And, uh, and he is uh, studying at the University of Frey in Berlin and he's from India. And his research is about water, uh, insecu uh, water security. So I'll let you share your screen and begin your presentation. Thank you so much to you both and um, good afternoon, everyone. It is a privilege to present my research, what I am doing for the last uh, few years and about to finish um, with the degree expected. And this research is from my hometown, Kolkata in India. Uh, it is one of the major issues in every single Global South megacities that we can find, that is water security. And today I'll talk about them very briefly uh, about the issues, challenges, and the research needs during and after COVID-19 that we are passing through. To begin with, I can tell you uh, my plan is to just uh, introduce with um, some issues and dimensions in general, uh, which is regarding uh, urban water security. And then I'll come up with uh, some uh, deep understanding by showing some results, uh, what I found from Kolkata. And lastly, I'll conclude with uh, some ideas about how to uh, focus or where to focus on um, uh, these measures and policies and our researches for um, uh, addressing these uh, issues and challenges I, uh, I'll talk about for the post-COVID world, because what, whatever is happening now, we need to just uh, cope up with that immediately. Well, so uh, main point is urban water security, which lies um, in lieu with Sustainable Development Goal 6, uh, talks about clean water and sanitation. And when we talk about water security, it is essentially ensuring the availability and reliable accessibility to water of enough quantity and a safe and uh, quite um, uh, good quality of water for basic human needs, livelihood of the people, sustainable ecosystem services, and well-managed risk and water-related disaster to prevent and protect from. So all together, it's all about equitable access uh, equitable and sustainable economies and uh, sustainable societies at the same time maintaining human rights, good governance and social justice for all of us. And that's most important for ourselves to think about water security if we are having it for all or not. From that point, I can drag your attention to this diagram where I check and um, connected, tried to connect all these goals, which are um, defined as sustainable development goals, with the main goal that I am focusing on at the moment, goal six, uh, in, 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 in its heart. And if I break down the whole water security in the city into five major components to a touch, then I can start with availability of water, which definitely touches uh, climate change action and sustainable cities and communities by goal three and goal 13 together. Right from there, we can go to uh, accessibility of water, which is high, highly dependent on a reduced uh, inequality goal by sustainable development goal agenda 30, uh, 2030. And with this inequality, it is definitely uh, we can drag in into gender equality quality of education and poverty altogether, if not limited to. And then this quality of water, it's depending on the life on water and on land. At the same time, how we are responsibly uh, consuming and production, uh, produ producing our goods and materials uh, for us and for the nature to go back. And the protection from disaster will be very much dependent on how good health and well-being we are maintaining. And we, we can see it in, during this pandemic, uh, the significance of this uh, good health and well-being. 
but it is not only limited to that and sustainable communities and responsible consumption, but also how justi justice, peace, and strong institutional governance and uh, maintenance are merging together to protect ourselves from the disaster related to water. And finally, we cannot ignore the importance of ecosystem that is surrounded um, uh, us and which is depending on our uh, potential thinkability and uh, our usability as well. So all these issues are depending on one sole thing called water, without which we cannot survive, without which nothing can survive in this blue planet. So, if we uh, come up with the scale issue for water security from these um, ideas that I talked about, we can majorly divide these water issues um, into three different scales. If we start from the, um, the international meta scale for the planet itself, then we can see water as a resource, the vital one, definitely, but as a resource to be protected for the sustainable environment to maintain. And it includes definitely climate change. At the same time, our sustainable future, depending on it, uh, hugely for every single mankind or animal that we can see. Uh, come down to the next level of the scale, which is macro or regional, or you can you may say uh, national in that sense. Uh, water can be regarded as a social and economic good, and that that is very important to maintain sustainable society for ourselves. Here, water is not only a resource, water is a good, water is a power by which we can generate our uh, responsible communities and justice for our own societies. Where one individual mankind is not important, but the collaboration, the, the, the most um, importantly, the collaborative manner of the societal um, the needs are important. And the last one, but not least, people. We as an individual uh, human being, for us, water is not only a resource, not only a social good or economic uh, priority, it is our right. We have to have a water. We have to have clean and enough water for our life, which is the most priority for every individual human being, at the same time, other living organisms. And that has to be respected, not only protected or maintained, it is respected and, and it's very important for sustaining life and the planet, again, if you go back to the planet level. From that point of view, our, um, the, the, the major lack still we have in, in our research area or our academia, at the same time, in government and policy level that although there is a balance between these biophysical and environmental factors and the social factors at the same time in the same pace, but focus is not given in that uh, biophys uh, uh, social factor as much as we are focusing on our biophysical um, uh, environmental protection. It is for the, uh, the funding, uh, if, if, if you can see, if you can see the, the major researches, Majorly, when we are talking about the global um, uh, arena, then all the um, most important focus are going for the biophysical factors, whereas majorly all these issues which are falling into that uh, social side are being somehow neglected or not being perceived as a comprehensive way altogether. And there is a lack and we are actually having a balance loss uh, during that. And we'll talk about this um, uh, later, uh, uh, about these individual factors. Now, this is the time to talk about that. If we think about these social factors, which are actually a major thing, but not yet uh, uh, taken into consideration that comprehensive way, it's depending on its societal factors like education, exclusion, interreligion discrimination, gender, race, migration, 
at the same time cultural problems like interreligious discrimination and different values and norm uh, uh, problems within different people different society or even different groups of communities same time uh, we when we talk about economy how it is related to water we somehow uh, ignore or at least we have seen in, in the past few years that it is not into that much of direct concoction of the research and um, the policy makers that urban poverty and uh, this economic dependence independence are related with water tax that we are always talking about if you have it or if you not have it that's a different issue that we need to talk about that we need to have a ne negotiation between these uh, when we are talking about uh, providing water tax or its affordability and definitely right to water and right to life and equal way is another uh, factor that is affecting water security of a cities particularly and definitely policy institution and management are all together kind of uh, uh, well linked so we come into some example from my study area uh, i'm from kolkata um, myself and i'm working on it because i know this area and so it is an advantage for me to work on that uh, it is in india in its easternmost side where it is having a border between india and bangladesh and it is one of the major cities in india which used to be its um, um, capital for 200 years during british time and still it is one of the four mega cities of india having 14 million people within 200 uh, or somehow 200 uh, square kilometer area so you can see the huge population within this small piece of land so as i told you it's a very small piece of land in comparison to its uh, population load within 1980 and 2014 the, the, the land use has abruptly changed and that change occurs the, due to the cost of environment. Very normal. Like uh, you can see, the urban settlement area from 49%, it became 79% within these 40 years almost. Whereas uh, the water bodies, um, urban small water bodies, we can call it wetlands, they, they shrank too much from. 23% in 1980 to 4% in 2014. Now you can see, see the difference. And the uh, vegetation, which is um, including of uh, roadside vegetation, uh, uh, some uh, plots within this um, uh, land tenure of, of personal um, the houses, that it is decreased as well, like from 29% from to 17%. So, this clearly shows how population load has uh, pushed the environment, the availability of water, that much that we cannot breathe properly in this city. Therefore, in our result, it's a, it's a huge, I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you a little bit uh, what we found. In our result, we found uh, most of the people who are falling into different categories of the social society they have different accessibility of water and water quality itself is a problem uh, uh, at the moment uh, due to its quality issue so uh, one or two uh, examples like 81 percent of our survey respondent depending on this piped water supply among them, only 8% use that for household work, works. So other people, except this 8% of these people, uh, this uh, respondent, they have to go outside of their house to fetch water for their daily uses. Otherwise, they cannot uh, pro pro provide enough water for their whole family member to drink for the whole day. At the same time, most of the people who are living in the city only uh, Forty-three percent people are depending on stand post or piped water supply outside their house. 
Otherwise, they have to either buy water or they have to go to the river, which is uh, River Ganges, as I showed you. It's on the western si uh, side of the city. But as you know, water quality of this River Ganges is not that sufficient with quality that you cannot use it directly for any drinking purposes or household work. You can take a bath, but with your own safety on yourself, because that has lots of issues with uh, uh, the health and uh, like, for example, dermatological problems. Other than these um, uh, water accessibility issues, major problems are lying on the class. Of the, uh, uh, of the people, like most of the people who are coming from a little bit higher caste of the society, you know there is a caste system still in India, unfortunately, higher caste people are more to get the water uh, on their houses. Therefore, it is all about power and privileges of the people who are grabbing the water. First of all, the city is lacking water due to its whole population load during these years. Secondly, it has problem with different strata of the society. And all these issues are interlinking together to have a barrier to access water. And how it is? It is like this. It is a kind of problem, like a, a punching bag. When there is a power, then there is a playing of uh, privileges. And they are all suppressing issues like age, gender, poverty, community, religion, sexual orientation, class, color, disability, and ethnicity within one city. And all these, all these factors are playing like a honeycomb. Every single thing is uh, uh, complementing to each other to play with this power and privilege politics. And this intersectionality is having a real vulnerable situation for water security in the city. One example more, we calculated how many people are having toilet in the house and we found the amount of uh, the toilet per person is even less than what we even think about uh, how much uh, pe people you can use one toilet. We found even 25 people or even 40 people are using one toilet in one household or in one community. At the same time, as I told you, some people, uh, more, uh, most of the people, they have to go outside to fetch water. For them, one piped water su uh, supply outside water is serving uh, more or less, you can say, uh, like 25 to 30 pe people at a time. So you have to have a queue to get water uh, for your own uh, purposes, for your toilet even, for your drinking, for your, your any purpose that you can use to, uh, to, uh, water for. We calculated another um, index. As I showed you, the um, water bodies within the city are decreasing and sank to uh, more or less 4% within 40 years. We found that are some peri-urban wetland outside of the city border. And all the ecosystem services that we can think of a city needs are being supplied from that peri-urban wetlands only. And that is showing how vulnerable situation of this city or just not an example uh, or not only a city from uh, India, I, we assume this is a problem for all the cities in the uh, South Asia or maybe extended to entire global south who are having all this problem due to overloading of population. From here, we can um, at least the problems or um, issues with urban water security is wetland, it is shrinking, 
uh, surface water quality because of the people, because of the car, because of the uh, 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 disparate um, extraction of um, water, groundwater and surface water bodies are both deteriorating. And because of the deterioration, uh, we can see the presence of arsenic, manganese, and other metals in the water. Regarding wash provision and underprivileged areas like slums, uh, as I showed you, even in general households, there is no such uh, enough amount of toilet or water provisions. Think about uh, people who are living in the shanty quarters in underprivileged areas. So per capita allocation is absolutely unbelievably low. And then uh, definitely it's all about social exclusion. And this exclusion is depending on the factors I showed you like race, gender, even uh, uh, sexual orientation and all. So all these issues are making entire water security in slums and non-slum areas in a heavy way that we are paying our cost for the COVID at this moment. And where uh, water is the most important issue at the moment because of this COVID, we have to clean our hands, we have to have our sanitation and hygiene maintained. Just read the newspaper what is happening in India. Then you can see how it is linked with all these issues that I mentioned. People are dying because there are no such provision of water as, as well. And that provision of water is not only depending on how much they can afford or not, no, how much they can access to it or not. And that accessibility depending on their own social strata. And this immediate wash responses must be followed by some measures to strengthen water security, which can protect them from the disaster, not only COVID-19 at the moment, but for future as well. It is not the end, it is just the beginning. So the research needs from our research, um, it found it's based on ethics. Think about water as a human right. Otherwise you won't get success in maintaining water security of any, anywhere in the world. This ethics, depending on how much this, this, uh, this wash provisions like toilet and sanitation are inclusive, how much they need, they are in need for the people. These other functions of toilets are many. I cannot complete it within one, one presentation, but that is important to know. Their relationship with these norms and values with gender and water, their challenges, their uh, distractive stratification of the society, how much they are related, fluidity of the people, how much they are capable of, the, how much they are uh, ready to uh, with all these issues that I told you. How much people are being seen, how much they are being heard, and how much they are being counted until unless you cannot ignore this uh, aftermath of the uh, this emergency issue. And definitely climate change, masculinity or uh, toxic masculinity uh, relationship with waters are uh, another factors. So my recommendation or our research recommends a proper urban planning should be there with an inclusive approach where policy recommendations should include intersectionality. Otherwise sustainability and sharing of water cannot be achieved. And the lagging behind will be those who are not counted or seen to avoid complete, complex emergency similar to climate change through we can say what rationing, uh, the data gaps, what, whatever that we need to uh, find out these problems more minutely at all the level that I mentioned for water security of a city. For now, it is, I think, uh, quite enough to show, if you just type my name and water security, you can find our uh, entire results uh, so far. So from here, I can ask you, for the discussion to begin. Well, thank you very much for this very informative presentation. And I think your presentation is as equally important as the one from Philomena, because you know, mm -hmm. uh, hair and water are very important. And in our society, like in developed society, we take this in, we take this for granted 
And we really need to be reminded that in the South, that's not the case. Water and air are not a public good that we can enjoy on a daily basis. Mm. So now if you have any question, mm. let's begin. And uh, <clears throat> so either through uh, Zoom, so raise your hand or through Slack, and we will uh, read your question. Well, Emily had a question for you. Yes, please. Yeah, so I will read it for you. Do you also include a watershed approach in your study, considering that watershed is one of the most relevant scale when uh, talking about water? Indeed, watershed management impact, water quality, water availability, flood, drought, risk management, with associated potential conflicts between upper and lower part of the watershed. Uh, the, the question is in Slack. Yes, I found it. Thank you, Emily. Yes, it's a very important, important aspect of this uh, water security assessment. But for our research, we didn't find any, um, any relevance at this moment because we worked on Ganges River Basin. And Ganges River Basin is so big and so, so diverse that so we thought to concentrate only on an urban area. An urban area is definitely not uh, kind of uh, segregated from the water for sure. But we uh, have an approach that is bottom up. So we want to do this small assessment within the city or the urban areas, municipal wise, and then we scale up to watershed. So it is more like bottom up to uh, get the entire watershed uh, scenario within us. Other, otherwise, it's a bit too, too difficult and too generalized then again. Like when you are talking about um, a macro scale, you are actually, um, maybe you, you, you will miss some very minute ma micro scale elements like gender and, uh, and all these things. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Emily. Anybody else, please? Um, yeah, I think Lorraine has a, has a question for you because her research is somewhat related with yours, but Please. on a very on a slightly different approach. Please. So I'm currently working with a doctoral student in geography in connection with the rising waters. Mm -hmm. I would like to know if like her, so with the lack of water, you mm -hmm. have to go into the file to carry out surveys and create mm -hmm. links with the habitants, the, mm -hmm. the different actors. Mm -hmm. um, if it's so, uh, how do you proceed? Okay, if, if, if you mean that um, you were talking about individual people's perception or their aspect for water quality, isn't it? You meant? Yes. Yes, actually, we, we did one survey where we asked the same question as well, and how much they feel their water is safe or not. This is one of the questions were like that and we, we found definitely different uh, different answers and then we combined it with our results or samples uh, where we found water quality at the lab so then we, we combined them and we found the result about how much uh, uh, this water uh, which is supplied by the government or they are collecting from outside of their houses or they are buying water is safe for it for them so it, 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 it was definitely one of the biggest challenge because we cannot um, ask the entire population of this mega city, but we had a kind of proportion of the pe people and we, we definitely uh, uh, did that way. Thank you so much.